Welcome to our Sunday service. My name is Lori Mickelson and I pastor the Northern Lights Christian Fellowship Church of the Nazarene here in Chetwin. Let's pray. Oh Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to learn about prayer. We thank you that you are a very persistent and present help in time of trouble. Help us focus on you through each part of every day. Amen. Jesus taught his disciples how to pray. We have the Lord's Prayer as an example of prayer. We also have in Luke's Gospel a little parable about prayer. Jesus uses the story of the unjust judge and a persistently annoying widow woman to make his point. This is what he says to his disciples. Luke 18 verse 1 to 8. One day Jesus told his disciples a story to show that they should always pray and never give up. There was a judge in a certain city, he said, who neither feared God nor cared about people. A widow of that city came to him repeatedly, saying, Give me justice in this dispute with my enemy. The judge ignored her for a while, but finally he said to himself, I don't fear God or care about people, but this woman is driving me crazy. I'm going to see that she gets justice because she is wearing me out with her constant requests. Then the Lord said, Learn a lesson from this unjust judge. Even he rendered a just decision in the end. So don't you think God will surely give justice to his chosen people who cry out to him day and night? Will he keep putting them off? I tell you, he will grant justice to them quickly. But when the Son of Man returns, how many will he find on earth who have faith? There's a few interesting facts in this story that all add to the picture. The judge mentioned was a real bad egg. How do we know that? This judge was, according to William Barclay, not a Jewish judge. As an ordinary Jewish disagreements went before the elders and didn't get to court. If a dispute got beyond the elders' ability to settle, three judges sat on the case, one chosen by either side and one who was independent. So this one judge was a paid magistrate who was appointed by either Herod or the Romans. These state-appointed judges were notorious, and usually a bribe and a complainant's personal status were required to get anywhere with a case. In other words, he could be bought. The widow was poor and she was defenseless. Widows had it tough in biblical times. If they couldn't work, widows depended on the generosity of family and friends. This widow appears to have little significance to society, but she had, what she did have was a good set of vocal cords and a stubborn determination. It's thought that this dear lady, being poor, who not, would not have had the mandatory bribe to see the judge in the first place, so she would most likely have made her plea from outside the tent where the judge was sitting. Picture it inside the tent. Cases being heard, judgments being made, money changing hands, all nice and corrupt, but very orderly. Outside, does this woman keep quiet? Not a chance. She lets it fly. Grant me judgment, justice against my adversary. The judge who's thinking, what's in it for me, refuses to see her, but she sticks to her guns. Grant me justice against my enemy. For some time he refused. Are you getting the picture? This woman was determined she was going to be heard or destroy her voice trying. Not only that, it seems this may have gone on for some hours or even days. Nag, nag, nag. Number three, the judge, who at this stage was probably becoming concerned for his own sanity and to avoid further public embarrassment, makes a decision. Even though I don't fear God or care about men, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will see that she won't wear me out with her coming back. What is it that Jesus says about this? He says, learn a lesson from this unjust judge. Even he re rendered a just decision in the end. This judge didn't care about the woman's case. He was only concerned for his own weariness. This woman was wearing him out. Parents, have you ever been in the position where a child, one of those sweet, innocent creatures, comes to you and says, Mother, can I have uh, or do such and such? As a wise parent, you know that this is not always what they need. So you say no. Five minutes later, 
the same child who, of course, being a child, has forgotten the answer and asks again. The answer is still no. Two minutes later, no. One minute later, no. But by persisting, they either catch you off guard or they wear you down and you blurt out something like, if it will give me a moment's peace, just do it. And before you know it, you've agreed to a dozen eight-year-olds having a sleepover at your place. If you've been there, this is how the judge felt, and so he should have. It's a judge's job to ensure that justice is served. He's been harassed to surrender. Jesus then makes a comparison. It's a case of this is what the judge is like. Listen to what he says. Even he rendered a just decision in the end. So don't you think God will surely give justice to his cho chosen people who cry out to him day and night? Will he keep putting them off? I tell you, he will grant justice to them quickly. Luke 18, 7 and 8. The difference between the way the judge operates and the way God operates is huge. The judge is all about the judge and is not concerned about the plight of the persistent widow. God sees that his people get justice. The writer of Hebrews says this, Let us then approach the throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Because Jesus has been in that place of human weakness, because he has encountered suffering, he is able to sympathize with our weaknesses. We don't have to harass God. That word quickly is an interesting one. When we pray for justice, when we ask, the answer is immediate. And God answers all prayers immediately. Though answers may not always appear to be immediate, sometimes the answer might even be no. God does not have a backlog of prayer requests stacked up in the corner like a pile of unanswered letters. Through answers, may, though answers may seem to us as being delayed. Remember, God's ways are not our ways. So what does any of this mean to us here today with the way we ask God's stuff? Well, it doesn't mean that we should be too repetitive in our prayers. Jesus told the disciples, And when you pray, do not keep babbling like the pagans, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. Don't be like them, for the Father knows what you need before you ask him. Matthew 6, verse 7 and 8. So what did he mean by this parable that was used to show them that they should always pray and not give up? Prayer was to be as natural to the disciples as breathing is to all of us. This gives the picture of ongoing conversation with God. This prayer life Jesus was talking about was to become a second nature, an ongoing interaction with God. So how do we achieve this? There's many answers to that many ways to pray. Try these. Talk to God verbally. As you think about something, direct your thinking to God. This is one of my favorite ways. Usually people don't even know that you're doing it. Write God a memo, a note, a letter, a thesis. Meditate on his word. Think it over and ask his Holy Spirit to give you insight. Review your day with God. Discuss the best and the worst thing that happened in the day with him. Place scriptures around your house. Read them and discuss them with God. This also serves as a great, great reminder of God's presence. Pray for your neighbors as you walk along a street. Set aside time for family, friends, people in the media, government, and even annoying people. There's even a page called Prayer Needs on Facebook you can post a request. That's just a few ways to pray. Prayer can be as simple to us as breathing. Talking to God can be as natural as it is to talk with our spouse or any other friend. If our prayers are within the will of God, they will of course be answered so that we will see them answered. If our lives are in accord with the holy will of God, our prayers will only be directed at achieving His will for our lives. Remember that God wants us to have life in all its abundance, which is not what we always see as being abundant living. Like the judge, our focus is not always on what God wants for us. True abundant living is about being in the right relationship with God and others. Think about the two great commandments. What was it 
that the widow was after? Justice. What is it God wants for us? True, justified living, free from the bondage of sin. God wants to give us what is right. The way of the judge was selfishness. He didn't fear God or care about man. The way of Jesus is selflessness. The proof is that he died so that we could be free. Why did Jesus instruct his disciples to pray and not give up? Because he knew that God wants to answer prayer and bring about justice for the person who is asking. The person praying will have the right thing happen. God wants us to have what is right in our lives. Is that what we seek? The right thing in our lives? The true thing? The correct thing? That is what God wants for us. Is this what he sees in us? Jesus asked the question after this parable. However, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? Are the things that you pray for within the will of God, or are they only for your gain? Are they for you here and now? What are the eternal consequences of the prayers that you ask? Are the prayers we ask faith-based? Can you pray the words with confidence that God will agree? Remember, God wants the right thing, the abundant thing, not the selfish thing for you. God always wants what's best for you. He will give you. He will give us quickly. Give us what is right and quickly. God waits to hear our prayers, so pray and don't give up. I can't think of a better thing to do with our time in the world today than to pray. We certainly have more than enough to pray for. Each day brings its own difficulties and trials, but each day also brings its own successes and victories. God wants to hear them all. He knows them already, but if we aren't carefully paying attention, we may not be aware of the wonderful blessings and answers to prayer that we have already received. May all glory be to him. Let's pray. Oh Lord, we are so grateful for each answered prayer. In our lives today, there is no way we can navigate through the days without you. Thank you for not tiring, tiring of hearing from us about our concerns or our praises. Help us always be faithful and thank you for answered prayer and help us not just to come to you for, to ask for something. Remind us to have those needed conversations every single day. Amen.